Hello my dear friends, freelancing may be or may not be a new term to you. But nowadays you might have heard lot of youth talking about freelancing. They may be doing freelancing or they may be thinking of being into freelancing. So the question comes that when somebody is involved in freelancing, then what are the taxation implications of the same? So through this particular session, through this video, I am trying to put up my views on the freelancing activity and its taxation implication for the benefit of all. The first question naturally which came in my mind was, what is freelancing? If somebody asked me, how would I answer that? In my opinion, my dear friends, freelancing usually means self-employed. That when you are not employed, you are doing on your own. Maybe you are providing a service or maybe you have started a business or I may say you are a novice, novice to a particular activity which you have taken up as a venture. That is a freelancing thing. The question comes that whether income tax law has a definition of term freelancing. The answer to this question is no, sir. There is no definition given to the term freelancing in income tax law. Then the question comes, second, while continuing your present employment, you may continue freelancing. The answer to this question in my opinion is yes. So I may say that a person may pursue freelancing by continuing at the same time continuing his employment or even without that further. In my opinion, freelancing may be treated as business or it may be treated as profession. When you are a professional, when you are a qualified person, say for example, you are a person who is a IT engineer and at the same time you are doing coding for some particular uh, persons who are wishing to avail your services for coding. It's a kind of freelancing. Say for an example, you are a person who is an architect and he has started apart from being into service, interior designing service, that is also a freelancing. Or you are a person who is into employment and at the same time you love to be a singer. So that's why you have started performing at some stage shows and you are being paid for that. This is also a kind of freelancing. So freelancing is to be seen in a broader terminology. Secondly, I can also put certain examples of freelancing, freelancing which may be in the field of music, writing, acting, computer programming, coding, web designing, graphic designing, translating, illustrating, painting, film production, even coaching can be part of freelancing. So these are not the final list, my dear friend. They are the kind of examples for you which you may refer to that, okay, Mr. Bhatia, these all could be considered as freelancing. But on a broader side, I may say freelancing includes business as well as profession, both. Another question which now you would be certainly interested in asking me is, Mr. Bhatia, tell us what is the right head of income? So right of it, head of income for freelancing could either be income from other source or could be profits and gain of business or profession. That is, when you are a freelancer, you have to choose from one of them that either my income from freelancing is income from other source or my income from freelancing is profits and gain of business or profession. When your volumes are slow, you are just a starter, then it may be treated to be income from other source. Or when you are into employment and at the same time you are carrying out certain freelancing, then you can offer freelancing as income from other source. But when you are more in terms of your volume into freelancing, then higher are the chances or higher is the suggestion that you should offer such income into profits and gain of business or profit. One other thing which I would like to say here that when you offer the income of freelancing as income from business profession, then the taxation perspective in terms of ITR are bit chain as compared to those when you offer it as income from other source. That I will also explain further. An interesting question which may further come up for your understanding is can deductions be claimed against such income? See, as I said in my previous slide that I will clarify on the aspect of uh, this thing, uh, freelancing income being offered as business income, freelancing income being offered as other source income. Prima facie, if you ask me claiming the deductions, I would say there is no issue. You can claim deductions against your freelancing income. Say for an example, if I earn 10 lakh rupees from freelancing by way of an orchestra or a band which I created, and in that band, I paid 6 lakh rupees to my colleagues who have supported me in running that band, then the remaining 4 lakh only is my income. Maybe I offer it as business, maybe I offer it as income from other source. 
But another interesting thing is when you offer it as income from business or profession to which I call PGBP, profits and gain of business profession, then if it is a business, you may offer the income under section 44 AD of income tax law. And when you are a professional, then you may offer freelancing income under 44 ADA section also presumptively with a minimum margin of 50%. And if you want to skip them, then you can offer the actual income also from such particular freelancing activity. So the option is on the SSE to choose which add of income. Once he chooses the option, he claims presumptive taxation, then there is no deduction because you are already offering income on presumptive basis. But when you are offering income on actual basis, you can certainly claim the deductions of those expenses which you have incurred in performing your freelancing activity. I hope you will find this particular point useful. Other significant query which you may discuss is, okay, what is the tax rate on freelancing income? See, the tax rate, first question which may come up in your mind, that Mr. Bhatia, is there a special rate of taxation for freelancing? The answer to this question is no. So when there is no special rate, it would be the slab rate, may it be the old slab rate or may it be the new slab rate, which will be applicable on the freelancing income, depending upon the option opted by the SSE. Simply speaking, the net freelancing income which you have earned would be added in your other income. And based on the total income figure and based on the slab rate which you have opted, the tax liability on freelancing will be finally computed. A very important aspect which I would like to highlight here for the benefit of freelancers is that whether freelancing is subject to GST applicability. Say for example, you are a freelancer, you are employed, but you are making some online sale of painting, etc. Then if your total painting sold for a financial year exceed 40 lakh and even for other products, whatever you are selling, if your total sale for a year exceed 40 lakh, you are supposed to obtain a GST number and ensure GST compliance. Similarly, if you are providing services in form of freelancing, then if your total value of services provided for a year exceed 20 lakh rupees, you are supposed to obtain GST number and ensure compliance thereof. So you have to be careful about this aspect that okay, whether GST is applicable on me and if yes, you should be a compliant on that. At the end, my dear friends, I hope you will find this video useful to you and this video will contribute to you in terms of managing the tax affairs of your freelancing activity. So wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.